Today, I've got the new Yeti ARC or ARC with me. This is their new full carbon trail hardtail. It uses 29 inch wheels. Those are wrapped in fat 2.6 inch tires. And up front, we've got a Fox 34, which has 130 mil of travel. Now, before we get into too much detail today, I just need to give a big shout out to our kit sponsors, Freewheel, who have adorned me in this lovely outfit for today's shoot. Uh, if you want to find out more about what they offer, head to the link in our description and you'll be able to click on that and find out more. Now, if you're wondering, the ARC actually stands for Alloy Racing Composite. This new frame isn't alloy, this is full carbon, but the original frame, which was launched back in 1991, used Easton's Pro Tape and Aluminium Tubing. Now, that bike was actually raced by the likes of Missy Giove and John Tomac to great success. The new bike, on the other hand, isn't designed to be a race machine. This is far more of a do-it-all hardtail. Yeti are aiming this at trail riders who maybe don't want that added uh, hassle of owning a full suspension bike. You know, the regular upkeep of all the pivots and the rear shock, but have done their best to make a bike that should be a really decent all-rounder when it comes to pretty much everything. It's light, it's got grippy tires, a short stem, wide bar, a decent amount of travel up front, and really decent geometry too. Yeti are actually offering the Arc in six different builds, but please bear in mind one of those is their 35th anniversary ultra high-end 9,000 pound model. So whether you're gonna consider that or not, I'm not totally sure. But what is interesting is there's also a frame only option, which is great if you're looking to just build a bike from scratch. Yeti actually used their higher end T-series carbon across the entire range of bikes. So whereas we normally see a split between their C-series and T-series, Yeti are saying that they are using their higher end premium carbon for every one of the ARC bikes. The main difference there is, generally speaking, the C-series carbon is cheaper and slightly heavier, although it's still just as stiff and strong as the T-series. And that does in theory then help explain just why uh, each of these bikes is pretty pricey. In terms of geometry, it feels like Yeti have found a really good middle ground. Now, while this bike is designed to be a trail bike, it's incredibly light, but that doesn't mean it's got the cross-country angles you might expect of a bike like this. While the head angle is relatively relaxed at 67 degrees, the seat angle is extremely steep at 76 degrees in order to give you the most efficient pedaling position possible. The bottom bracket actually sits quite low at 310 mil off the ground, which may incur the odd pedal strike now and again, but should also mean it feels nice and stable through the turns. When it comes to reach figures, those span from 420 mil on the size small up to 490 mil on the extra large. This here is a medium at 445 mil. In terms of detail, Yeti have opted to use a press fit bottom bracket rather than a threaded version, which might not win everyone over. The cables are all internally routed and feature some really neat entry and exit ports, which should go some way to helping keep the arc nice and rattle free. If you take a closer look at the down tube, you'll see two sets of bottle cage mounts, one on the top and one on the bottom. That's partly down to the fact that the seat tube is as short as it is, just to help make that frame nice and compact. So as long as you don't mind having your bottle in the direct firing line from the front wheel, not an issue. In terms of the spec on the six full builds of the bike, they all have a few things in common. That includes the use of the 130mm Travel Fox 34. Now that does vary between the performance and factory version, but they all have 130mm and they all use a 44mm offset. There is also the Maxxis tyre combo. So they're both 2.6 inches wide. It's a Maxxis Minion DHF on the front and a Recon at the back and all the bikes use a Cane Creek 40 headset. So on to specifics, this in front of you here is the T1 version. So that means it gets the factory spec 34, so you can see the Kashima coat on the stanchions, while it does use the transfer post from the performance line. So that means no Kashima coating on the post shaft, which does go to save a little bit of cash. Gearing comes courtesy of Shimano's XT 12-speed drivetrain. That means you get their full 10 to 51 tooth cassette which is a really wide range and we know that Shimano are really good in terms of reliability and durability as well so that's a real added bonus. Shimano also supply the brakes again 
XT on this particular build. It's the two piston rather than four piston version. Um, and while we have had issues with uh, bike point consistency in the past, I'm pleased to say on this particular bike, I've had no such problems. One of the key spec choices that Yeti have made on this bike is to go with a 2.6 inch tire. Now there was a time just a few years ago when plus tires seemed to become a thing. There was a lot of drawbacks with those though, uh, mainly down to the fact that if you couldn't get that pressure quite right, they would squirm or alternatively, they would just ping and bounce off everything if they were too firm. It feels like a 2.6, 2.5, 2.6 is a really good middle ground. So you get a lot of the benefits from those plus tires. So uh, the additional grip, um, the bump absorption, all those sort of added traits that plus tires were uh, renowned for, but without the downside. So in terms of carcass stability, when you push into a turn, the 2.6 and the 2.5 inch tires are just that bit more stable. Yeti have done a really good job here because the tire combo here means you get a decent amount of grip up front courtesy of that Minion DHF but you've also got that fast rolling recon at the back. But I'll go into more detail about that a little bit later when I talk about the ride characteristics of this particular bike. In terms of finishing kit, Yeti have spec'd a race face 50mm stem on this particular build which has been paired with their own 760mm carbon bars. In terms of grips, we've got the ODI Elite Pros, which are nice and comfy, and a WTB Yeti branded Silverado saddle. DT Swiss take care of the wheels. Uh, in this case, it's the XM 1700s. And across all the bikes in the Yeti Arc range, the internal width is 30 mil, which is what they found to work really well with the 2.6 inch tires. Okay, now on to the ride characteristics. Now first, I just want to say that I've loved my time aboard the Yeti ARC or ARC, however you want to say it. It's a seriously, seriously fun bike to ride. When it comes to climbing, that 76 degree seat angle is apparent straight away. It manages to sit your hips nicely over the bottom bracket for really efficient pedaling. It helps though, this bike only weighs 11.6 kilos, which isn't really much. Then you've also got that relatively stiff frame which makes power transfer nice and efficient as well so when you do start to really stamp on the pedals this thing just fires along absolutely surges and is really eager to get going it isn't the most stretched out bike by any means you know that effective top tube i think is around 604 mil long paired with that 50 mil stem it doesn't necessarily put you in a, a cross-country-esque position on the bike but it's by no means you know a slouch you still feel like you're in a really good position to climb up anything steep. And when you consider you've got that big bailout 51 tooth cog on the cassette, I've had absolutely no issues with, you know, scrubbling up super steep techie climbs. And I think part of the help there also comes from that broad 2.6 inch recon tire, which on hard pack surfaces or when it's just dry, it manages to generate a really, really good amount of traction. In short, in terms of climbing, this thing will fly up the hills. It's a similar story when you get going on that mellower single track as well, where the big 29 inch wheels coupled with those 2.6 inch tires seem to just absorb all that little chatter and manage to roll over the smaller things with no real issue. Despite what the scales might suggest, this is no super lightweight, twitchy cross country bike. Instead, it's actually really well composed and nice and easy to control when things do get technical. It helps that you've got that comfort and rollover from that, the 2.6 inch tires and the big 29er wheels. There's definitely a comfort and silence to this bike, which you don't get on many other hardtails. And while Yeti have done a decent job in terms of creating a bike that feels confident and stable at speed, it's still ridiculously fun when you do want to throw it around. The change days are only 433 mil long and lofting that front wheel up in the air is super easy. And it's also really agile, which just adds to the fun factor. What's also really key here is that if you're brave enough to commit to a really gutsy line, that might be over a cambered set of roots, which are slippery and kind of horrible, I found that committing to it and making sure I'm off the brakes, this bike will just stick it, which I must say, you know, on a lot of other hardtails, especially stiffer carbon ones, I haven't maybe felt that I could do the same. 
So it doesn't feel fidgety or nervous when you get to that challenging stuff, which is a real bonus for me. As any tester would do, I'm always gonna be fairly picky when it comes to the spec. So in this case, for me, I think the first obvious change would be the recon tire at the back. And that's not to say it's a bad tire by any stretch of the imagination, but as I live in the UK, and for the most part, it's a swampy little island for probably six, seven months of the year, there it simply just isn't enough bite on that tread to get me through the winter. You know, I love the fact that it rolls really fast, but as soon as stuff gets muddy and boggy, as you know, it always does over here, it just lacks, you know, braking traction. And so I would just change it for something just with a bit more, a bit of a deeper tread, just to give me a bit more confidence, I think, on when I'm tackling some of the steeper trails. Overall then, Yeti have done an incredible job in making a truly capable trail or as the man behind the camera likes to call it, a down country hardtail. I'm not too sure about that, but whatever you want to call it, it is seriously capable and a hell of a lot of fun to ride. The big problem here though, is you're going to need seriously, seriously deep pockets if you do want to own one. But if you do have deep pockets and you do love a hardtail, then this is certainly worth a look at. So what do you guys think of this new breed of carbon hardtail? please let us know in the comments down below. And for more independent reviews like this, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on that little bell icon so every time we upload a new video, you'll be notified.